Hi everyone, it's me Lois with Ozzy Bozzy Knit Designs. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do the Italian uh, cast on method. This is a really wonderful stretchy cast on method that you can use. Um, what I personally love about it is how it looks like it's just your knitting and there's no hard edge. So um, if you use this like on rims or cuffs and things of that nature, it's a very elastic, which is great, but it also just looks really cool because there's no hard line of this is where the knitting started. And sometimes I like that line and it's decorative, but sometimes it's fun to just have it be magical. And I feel like the Italian cast on method does that. So the Italian cast on method uses a long tail. So it's similar to the long tail cast on in a lot of ways, but especially in measuring out that tail. Now, um, the way that I like to measure for the long tail and for my Italian cast on method is the wrapping zigzag zigzag method. Um, I know that some people say like whatever your circumference or length width is supposed to be, do that times four or something. I don't want to bring out my tools, uh, like my measuring tools, but I don't have to. So I prefer this way, but you do you. All right. So here we go. I will say this. I have noticed that the Italian cast on method uses a lot more yarn than a long tail. So the way that I measure for the Italian is a little bit different because I'm going to give myself some extra yarn along the way. And so if I was doing the long tail, I would normally just do my wrapping with about the width of the knitting needle between each wrap. Okay. But not with the Italian. I'm going to come all the way to the base of my needle because I'm going to need the room. And I'm wrapping it very loosely, very widely. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and stop there. We've got five wraps on there. And now move my needles out of the way. I Let's pretend we're going to cast on 50 stitches. Okay. So I've got five stitch length here. So to double that would be 10. And I'm going to do by 10 because that's how I like to do things. And I'm doing the tutorial so I get to the side. All right, so here's 10. And then if I do another wrap, that's 20. Hold that in place, zigzag up. This would be 30. Zigzag back down to the bottom, 40. Zigzag back to the top, 50, right? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And then let me just spread that out so you can see it more clearly. Okay, 50. 50 zigzags. But then if you're casting on 50 stitches, um, you always want like a little bit extra yarn so you have a tail. And because like I said, what I've noticed is that the Italian uses a lot more tail. I'm going to go ahead and go the full length, even though that's way more than five inches. Okay, so that's going to be my starting point. Now, when you're doing the Italian cast on method, you can start off one of two ways. You can go ahead and make a slip knot and start with a slip knot, like classic cast on 101, right? Slip knot. This slip knot will be your purl stitch. Um, and that will make sense when I start showing you what we're doing. Or you can opt to not start with a slip knot and not have anything but the yarn on your knitting needle. I will say this. If you have never started a cast on without using a slip knot, don't do that for the first time with the Italian cast on method. Practice with a long, a traditional long tail cast on method first so that you feel comfortable with it because it is a little bit wonky and it it's actually fine. It's total. It's better than fine. It it keeps that fluidity of the uh, of the Italian cast on method where it looks like everything's just kind of starting. If you do a slip knot, there will be one stitch that has like that little hard knot. Totally fine. But if you go this method, you won't have that right. And so um, yeah. So it it is. Cool to do it that way, and if you wanted to try it, I would encourage you. But I do encourage you to first practice doing that with the long tail. And I'm going to use the long tail cast on method as a comparison for a lot of things in this tutorial, so bear with me. All right, so we've got our long tail, 
and we've got our working yarn, knitting needles. Okay, so what we want to do that's different than the long tail cast on is we actually want our uh, tail end yarn to be away from us, falling away naturally. So my working yarn is this yarn, it's towards me and my tail end yarn is away from me. So to start out, we're gonna do just the same thing as we would do for the long tail, um, which is going to slingshot pose. So to do that, you wanna take both the tail end and the working yarn with your slip knot or your loop, either way is fine. And then you're gonna close your middle through pinky finger down over it. Now I keep my middle finger a little bit loose. You just wanna kind of hold that in place. And then this slip knot or just yarn is gonna be what you hold. And then you insert your thumb and index finger Let's put our knitting needle in there. Now we've got the slingshot, right? This is slingshot pose. We should all recognize this. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna show you the long tail cast on method real quick so that we have something to compare it to. So if I was doing long tail, I would just come through and go like this and start casting on, okay? And I'm gonna cast on a few stitches. Let's just do this thing. All right, look at this line at the bottom. Oh, let me come closer. Do you see this line at the bottom? This line is so awesome for the long tail cast on. It makes it really easy to join in the round and not have things uh, twisting because this line is what we would have facing all one direction. And that way we would know that we're not twisting mid cast on. So it's really helpful. Guess what? We don't have that with the Italian cast on method. Let's get rid of that. Now we are flying blind, as it were. Okay, so tail away from us, working our nearest, slingshot pose. Okay, there we go. So for the Italian cast on method, what we wanna do is we're not going all the way to our, the outside of our thumb. We're actually just gonna go right here above this yarn on our thumb. So we just go over it, kind of pick it up, bring it over to the yarn that's on our index finger. We're going over the top of that yarn. And now we're doing something different. We're gonna push down on that index finger yarn and we're gonna maneuver underneath the yarn on our thumb and come out the other side. Now, if we look at this really closely, we can see that that looks like a knit stitch. So remember I said the slip knot, and if you didn't do a slip knot, then just like me, this little random piece of yarn on our needle, that is the purl stitch, and we have just made a knit stitch. And that is how the Italian cast on method works. We're gonna make a knit stitch, a purl stitch, a knit stitch, a purl stitch. All right, so we've made our knit stitch. Now I really use, you'll notice me using my right hand a lot in this cast on method because I'm kind of holding it in place and making sure that it doesn't shift around. Because if you notice, I don't have a hard line here. You'll see more clearly what I mean when we cast on some more. So we did the knit stitch, let's do a purl. We wanna go to our index finger yarn and pick that up. And then we wanna go to our thumb yarn, pick that up, by go, or we'll not pick it up, but we go over the top of it, then push down and around underneath the yarn on our index finger. And here we go. Now look, this is what I'm talking about. There is no hard, fast line here. Yay! <laughs> What's gonna happen is that's gonna make it kind of really difficult to make sure that you don't twist. So I'm gonna give you my little tips now. All right, let's start at the beginning. So we're gonna make a knit stitch. So we go over the top of the thumb yarn, push down on it, then go up over the index thumb, index yarn, index finger yarn, push down on it, and then we want to go under the yarn on our thumb to make the knit stitch. Now, before you make the purl stitch, give this a little tug. We are going to force this cast on to have a line at the bottom. And this is gonna help prevent twisting, and it's gonna help us keep track of where our cast on bottom is and top, because that matters. So we just give it a little tug, okay? Now we'll make a purl stitch. 
So to make the purl stitch, we're going to go to the outside of the index finger yarn, pick that up, go to the thumb yarn, push that down, and pull the thumb yarn underneath the index finger yarn. And then we've got that done. Now we need to do some more tugging, but this time with our index finger yarn, because we are making this, this cast on, we are making it have a line at the bottom. So you see that how I've done that now compared to last time, there is a line. It's not perfect, it's not perfect, but it's better than not having one. And you might need to adjust, like I just adjusted. Be careful, do not cast on too tightly. Like if you cast on too tightly, you're gonna twist. You need to create your hard line while being a little bit loose, if any of that makes sense. But okay, here we go. Let's do the let's do the knit. So we go to the outside of the thumb yarn, underneath, pick it up to the index finger yarn over it, push down, pull that index finger yarn through the thumb yarn, and we got that knit stitch cast on. Adjust it a little bit and make the purl stitch. So we're going to go to the outside of the index finger, scoop it up, go up over the thumb yarn, push down, slide that underneath the index finger yarn, and like so. All right, so, and then we want to go ahead and tug this. Oh, I felt that slip, and it felt good because now I kind of have a line. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop giving you the tips for a minute and just cast on some stitches. And we're just going to focus on the movement here. So we go towards you over the thumb yarn, pick up the thumb yarn, over to the index finger, push down, and pull that index finger yarn through the thumb yarn. Okay, and then we want to do the opposite because we're going to make the Purl stitch. So we go to the index finger yarn underneath it, then we go up, pick up the thumb yarn by going over it and then under it because we're pulling it through the yarn on our index finger. And then we just want to give everything a nice little tug. I said I was going to give you my tips, but I was doing it anyway. So there we go. And yeah, I think so. The thing is, what I think you should do. If this is a new to you cast on or you've struggled with it a lot, is just kind of try to be gentle with yourself. And I'm going to show you in real time how I do the tugging because I think that that's easier to understand how I'm being loose and tugging it all at the same time because I feel like that sounds contradictory. But so in real time, it just looks like this I just pull my whole hand towards me to tug it underneath and then I do the next one and it's already in place and I do the next one and I pull it towards me and it's really not a big deal um, to do that and just look though at this cast on see how I am getting a line oops I messed that baby up it's okay I did a pearl so I didn't need to do it um yeah it's just like a gentle movement but it makes a world of difference. And so if I can, let's just go ahead and slide this down to our, to the cable part. This is where it makes a difference. This is where it matters, is right here on this cable. Because I went to the extra step of tugging a little bit, I now have a line of cast on. This is still gonna be invisible when you begin knitting into it, really well. But what it does is it helps me as the knitter to put all my stitches in a row, not twisting for when I go in the round. Okay, so I want to show you what it would look like if we didn't do the tugging. Okay, and I will warn you, you don't have to do the tugging, you know, you do you boo, but the thing is, um, you don't want to cast on too tightly with this one. And it's not because it loses its stretch factor, it doesn't. But what happens is it, oh, I did a long tail cast on. <laughs> What it does do is it makes it really twisty. So I'm going to try really hard not to do any tugging and just cast on. Because see, you can do this really quick. No tugging, no tugging. It's like a mantra, I tell myself. And I'm going really fast. And so it's, and we could look at this 
you might look at this and be like, yeah, but you have a line. You have a line. Okay. You're right. I do. I've been practicing this a lot. Okay. And now let's do, I'm going to do a little bit more because I really want to be able to show you the problem with this cast on that you can avoid by doing a little bit of tugging. Okay. Here we go. Let's slide it down to our cable. Have I been practicing tagging too much? This is what this is telling me. <laughs> but you can see it is a little twisted. It, it twists here, and this can be confusing because where is the bottom? But I will tell you this uh, too that actually, right here is always going to be an issue you're cast on. If you don't use a slip knot, this is going to be an issue if uh, you use this method just because. This is our purl stitch and this is our knit stitch, but it gets all twisty and so it can get confusing. Let's look at it. So if we did it this way, like, okay, that makes sense, but it doesn't, then it just looks like a wraparound. So you actually want to make sure when you're knitting into this that the way that the wrap is on here makes sense. So like in this case, okay, I've got this this stitch that's not doing anything, then this one kind of looks like a knit, which makes this one look like a purl and that one looks like a knit. Purl, knit, purl, knit. This is going into one by one ribbing. Okay. And so you'll just want to do it that way. Um, I would just experiment. Definitely, if you're having trouble with twisting stitches, try. Just try the tagging. Just trust me on this one. I have done this cast on a gazillion times this summer <laughs> because I frog a lot when I'm designing and anyway so I would just start over but do it that way and um, let me know if you have any trouble so I'm always ready to help thank you so much for watching uh, I hope you have a good weekend bye bye